Ring push-ups are the best thing that I've added to my program in a long time. So not only are they splashable in any program, you can modify them to your strength level, whether you're beginner or advanced. You can do them almost anywhere, and then they just look cool, okay? Now listen, here's the thing. I'm not the first fellow on here to talk about ring push-ups or ring exercises. I'm not a gymnast, but I just wanna offer my own experience to the conversation with using ring push-up variations as opposed to bench press, and then how you can start to incorporate some things into a program that uses both. If you want giant pecs, listen up, because I'm gonna talk specific benefits and everything that I know about them. But if you're not sold, well, let's sell you. So for example, I can do nine pseudo planche push-ups with rings, and then it's just complete failure after that. Next sets are like eight, seven, six. Just keep that in mind. That's what I did most recently. Keep in mind for months, all I've been doing is harder variations of ring push-ups. So the pseudo planche, the weighted ring push-ups, RTO ring push-ups, so on and so forth. I got curious the other day and just that bench pressing itch started scratching. So I scratched the itch and I got 275 on the Arch Nemesis Cambert bar for a three by eight. Bro, my bench is literally the same as it was months ago. Now the biggest benefit to ring push-ups ties into that car salesman pitch and that they are extremely muscularly taxing. I'm still brutally strong at bench pressing and horizontal pressing in general, despite bench pressing as a movement pattern feeling somewhat alien just because I've neglected the movement for months because I built some muscle on top of what I already had before. Now wait, there's more, like uh, Billy Mays used to say, rest in peace. I'm not a shady car salesman, all right? So there's more context and nuance that comes into play with that. So if you're someone looking for a novel exercise and a convenient excuse to not bench press, listen up, because this is for you. We're gonna segue a little bit into like the relationship between size and strength. Am I saying that you'll get that level of bench pressing strength or acquire it for the first time with rings alone? Fuck no, absolutely not. You have to have already built that strength once doing the thing that you want to get strong at. Strength is in part like a neurological adaptation. Your brain has to adapt to it, right? And that neurological adaptation can take a really long time to refine, right? Sometimes just as long as building muscle. So I've been bench pressing since I was 15, meaning if you wanna rep some heavy weights on bench press, the only sane path is to do the thing that you wanna get good at. Here's the thing though, strength is absolutely something that you have to build if you wanna be especially good at it. But strength also in of itself is an expression of how jacked you are. More so on a flat back bench press than really any other compound movement I can think about. I carry a large amount of muscle mass in my upper body, especially in my pecs, meaning that despite my neurological adaptation being somewhat rusty because I hadn't benched in a long time, I'm able to bench the same weights that I did before, meaning with some practice, I could bench more. And that could only be possible if planche ring push-ups were difficult enough to at least maintain the muscular adaptation, if not build it from where it was at before. If they weren't extremely muscularly taxing, I would have lost size and then consequently strength as well. Now, why are they so muscularly taxing? I'm just gonna break down a little bit of meathead biomechanics, no math or anything like that because I'm terrible at it. But you look at what the ring push-up breaks up into, you have a full lengthening effect, you wrap completely around your body so that it maximally stretches your pecs, your shoulders, and when you turn the rings out, even your biceps, and the act of turning the rings out stretches your pecs and your shoulders even more. So that's the first thing. Then you get the full shorten, the full, the full squeeze, okay? You get a full squeeze on the pecs at the top, you lose a little bit of tricep, I feel, but for me, the biggest prime mover in the bench press or in any horizontal press is the pecs. So that's mostly what I'm concerned about. I'm already training my triceps with something else. So when you take that full stretch and then that fly and that full squeeze at the top, you get something that has a tremendous amount of tension from top to bottom, but it doesn't end there. You could also see when I do the pseudo planche push-ups, I'm pushing from my hips. That makes the leverages terrible, meaning it's a lot harder to push my body weight when I push from my hips. A comparison that I could give, and this is the caveman comparison, you can take lifting a box like a normal human being, like you just walk up to it, okay? Pretty easy to lift, all right? Then you try lifting that same box with your arms straight out in front of you, and then try doing that. It's a lot harder to do that, and it's because you're adjusting the leverages. Now, all variations and regressions of ring push-ups, no matter if you're doing a beginner or advanced variation, have each of those effects in some capacity. I'm just gonna go from easiest to the hardest that I've done anyway, 
ring push-up variations that you could use appropriately to your strength level. So we're gonna start with the incline ring push-up without a fly. So you're pretty much just getting the stretch. You're inclining your body so that you have to lift less of your total body weight and you're not doing any fly. So what you essentially get is something that feels like a dumbbell bench press with an even better stretch than most of y'all probably getting with it because a lot of people cut rum on dumbbell bench. But once you can do like three sets of 10 with that, then you can move into doing the fly so you can get that shortening action. And then as you get stronger, again, you get your three sets of 10 in, maybe you can add weight in between progressions so that you can move up that way as well. You move on to the flat, same progression follows. You start with no fly, flat ring push-ups, then you do the fly until you get to RTO, which is ring turns out. Like we just talked about earlier, that magnifies the stretch and the contraction that you get with the squeeze at the top by a ton. The RTO flat ring push-ups are more where I would say you're more into that intermediate level, especially if like you're a decent body weight. I weigh buck 95 for, for reference. You keep training, you keep progressing, and then you get to those decline pseudo planche RTO ring push-ups. It's a mouthful. Got to come up with a name for that. Those are brutal. Like I said, I can only do nine reps of that. And I literally just showed what I could also bench press. If you're new to rings or you're just on the newer side to training in general and you want to implement this into your program, put this as like an accessory after your regular horizontal pressing that you're doing. So like your weighted dips, your bench press, whatever the case may be, and pick an easier variation, bro. Please don't hurt yourself trying one that is hard just because you want to keep up with people that you see on social media. Now, RTO, let's talk a little bit more about that because it's not just an arbitrary difficulty knob that you turn to just make the exercise work better. It does that and increases the chest stimulus and the stimulus you get on your shoulders, but it also comes with some bicep stimulus as well. You get a big stretch on the biceps and it'll feel weird for the first time if you've never done it before. And it could potentially be something that is hard to recover from. If I had to compare it to something, it's like the compound movement version of an incline curl in terms of the stretch that you feel, which may be too much for you if you've never done that before. So what I'm gonna recommend is that if you've never done that before, start with just turning them out at lockout as opposed to having them turned out at the bottom as well. It'll be a little bit easier, a good bit easier actually, because you'll be able to do more reps that way. But it'll also allow you to train your bicep tendons under that stretch and stretching them while they're fully locked out as well. It's like straight arm strength, I think is what they call it in gymnastics. You can scale this movement by just changing the leverages and from where you push from with your hands, but obviously you can scale by adding weight as well. But there's a bald Omni-Man way that I like to go about it. So first and foremost, one, you can add weight to a regression to allow you to work up to the next harder variation. Or if you're strong, you're a house, right? And you can do pseudo planche decline ring push-ups and you want to add some load to it you can add load to a harder variation to make it even harder now adding weight to push-ups unless you have like a kensui vest is impractical sometimes especially if you're strong and you have to add a lot of weight i say wear your backpack or whatever you're using to load yourself as high up on your back as you can you're still going to be able to move your scaps literally bro you can depress retract do whatever you want with your shoulders with having the weight on your upper back that's the thing though, just keep it consistent. Do what's comfy. Most fellows are gonna put it somewhere between their upper back and their neck. Just keep in mind though, the closer you get it to your hips, the more load that you're gonna have to use. And my way of doing it is to circumvent having to use so much weight. Now, mistakes and things that I want you to keep in mind before I talk about ways that you can implement it specifically. First and foremost, the number one thing that I can think of is taking the movement too lightly, whether that is that you're on the newer side and you don't pick a variation that is appropriately difficult for you. So you try to do planches and you bench like a buck 35 and you hurt yourself. Or if you're on the stronger side and you don't pick an appropriately challenging variation and you, you don't get anything out of the movement. Use the variation that is right for you. But speaking of strength, just like with any other horizontal press, vertical press on a barbell or dips, whatever the case may be, Upper back strength and stability is very important on this, just like it would be on a bench press. So you still wanna hammer your upper back, you wanna hit your rows, your pull-ups, so on and so forth. Next, this is huge, bro, right? So the whole reason why you're using rings or dumbbells or anything that allows you to wrap around your body and get more ROM, range of motion, is to get more range of motion. You have to take advantage of that full ROM. 
Now, if you've never giga stretched your pecs before, bro, obviously do a regression, build your tolerance to that end range of motion and build from there. But the goal is to use all of that range of motion because that's where all the growth is at. Also, just like with any horizontal press, overhead press, you want to work your triceps. Work that long head, work every head of the triceps, bro. Get every head as jacked as possible, right? So you do your push downs, your overhead extensions, you do your jam presses. Whatever it is that you do for bench pressing, tricep wise, you're going to do here as well. Now, some people are probably wondering how they compare to the Ubermensch chest pressing accessory, the time tested dumbbell bench press. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit and then we're gonna get into how you can incorporate all of these things. So here's the overall verdict and this is price point aside. I feel that rings are superior for the chest pressing aspect. Dumbbells are superior as a holistic training tool, meaning you can train your lower body with them. And in my opinion, the isolations are dramatically better on dumbbells because I'm gonna be honest with you, it would just make more sense to do that. I feel rings are superior to dumbbells in the capacity of chest pressing though, just because you get that full stretch at the bottom, which you can get on things like fly presses, which we'll talk about in a sec, but you can also get that full squeeze at the top, which you can't quite get on fly presses. Now fly presses are something that I really enjoy as well. I typically, and this is how I use them, I use them as what I call like a pivot. We're incorporating a lot of my love for strength training into this. This is like a strength training term, pivot. A pivot exercise or a pivot week or block or whatever the case may be is something that you do that is somewhat similar to what you were training for a long time, but you're doing that in order to make that movement fresh. So in powerlifting, you may be doing a lot of bench pressing. On a pivot block or a pivot week, you may do primarily dumbbell bench pressing. In this case, I primarily use rings. I may use fly presses for a week or two to make the rings fresh again. My boy Cooper, someone that I work with, very strong, monster incline bench. He really has been liking the ring push-ups. Shout out to Cooper, by the way. His head to delt ratio right now is freaking insane, bro. We're almost done, fellas. Let's talk about how to throw them in your program specifically. We're gonna talk about myself first and then different combos that I like. So for me specifically, I do an RTO push-up with a little bit of weight. I do my camber bar bench press right now because I am gonna train it because I I'm just curious, I wanna push it and kinda of see where it's at. And then I also do the pseudo planche ring push-ups. So that's a three times pressing frequency. And then I also have you know additional tricep work, additional variations of ring push-ups or whatever the case may be for some more chest pressing volume. I'm also doing some overhead pressing and behind the neck pressing. Now a combo that I recommend for most beginner to intermediate level lifters is just the classic bench press combined with either a beginner or an intermediate variation of the ring push-ups. What you're essentially doing is a meat and potatoes bench workout, and then you're filling in with like a stretch-based chest press. For a lot of people, it's been the dumbbell bench that they've used that for. People have been getting jacked and stacked doing that for decades, okay? The only difference being is that you're opting for the ring push-up, and for a lot of people, you're gonna be getting that actual super stretch for the first time you've ever in your life, okay? Because a lot of people, like I said in the, earlier in the video, cut ROM on their dumbbell bench presses. Now, we're building on that idea a little bit, not completely replacing it because that is still God tier, okay? It's top tier. But you're getting that shortening contraction at the top, unlike what you can get on a dumbbell bench. Now, another combo that I like is somewhat more meathead biomechanics, but you're combining a shortened biased variation of the ring push-up with a lengthened biased version. So the lengthened biased version is just a regular old ring push-up with no fly, full deficit, and you're doing it weighted. You're adding weight to that lengthened position, which is overloading that stretch, but it's not as hard on the shortened part of it, like the squeeze, because you're not bringing your arms in. You do that first, and then you do like an RTO ring push-up with a fly at the top. This is for people that wanna join the fellowship of the ring. They really wanna take that ring pill and they wanna use two different variations of the ring push-up to make like a holistic, what Alex calls blending workout. Now in conclusion, I'm really pleased with my personal decision to include rings into my workouts just because it's allowed me to explore the different variations, learn different things, and then obviously gave me good results as well. A couple key takeaways. One, 
rings are a tool in the toolbox. So if you're doing something that is working really well for you, keep the benefits in mind, but keep doing what you're doing. The downfall of novel exercises on social media is that a lot of people see something new or hear the benefits of something, they get excited about it, and then they switch it out. And then they find something else that's cool, and then they switch it out. And then you're starting over your progress on that over and over again by never actually getting good at any particular exercise. All right, fellas, that's all she wrote. I'm gonna head back inside and get some chow. If you have any questions, please let me know. Watch these videos wherever they're at now that you've watched this one. Have a great day. Bye-bye.